the artwork. Yeah, it's really a cute cartoony kind of style. Um, I love the, the design of the cards made it for me really easy to understand which card was the spell, which was the ingredient. And of course the instant card looks very different as well. The big red background, I think. <laughs> and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer card game review today up on the tabletop we have brew and fool brew and fool is a card game set in a fantasy world where players are competing to help save the dying grand alchemist by brewing a really fancy creative potion and competing to become the next grand alchemist for the king and in the game, it plays four to seven players. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages seven and up. Players are going to get a sabotage card as well as four other cards in their hand, whether they be ingredients or spells, and they're going to compete to place those cards into their cauldron. However, the player who starts off with the royal emblem will be the one that is going to determine whether they get to do any of that work or not, or whether they get everything. The rounds go and take place until one of the three victory conditions happens, either the deck runs out and whoever has the most cards in their cauldron is the winner or if somebody manages to get six different types of cards out of ten total needed or if they get seven cards of the same type in their cauldron they will win anyway that's the basic idea of the game brew and fool let's take a look down below i'll show you what comes in the game how to play and then we'll talk about the game so here we have the game brew and fool set up for four players and as you can see each player is going to get a sabotage card these cards are all going to start outside of the average deck or the main deck here and be dealt one to each player if you're playing with more than four players you're going to add more more than four sabotage cards as well as of course you're going to be adding additional ingredients too if you're playing over six players then go ahead and hand out the royal emblem to the youngest player and deal out four cards from this deck here to each player face down then every single player is going to take their sabotage cards and place them face down as well and they can go ahead and shuffle their hands if they would like and then you're going to begin the game the Royal Alchemist for the round will not be participating, but every other player will go ahead and draw a card from the deck and then choose one of them to play. Now you can choose to play an ingredient or a spell card and depending on the outcome of the entire round will determine what happens. They will simultaneously reveal the cards and in this case one of the three outcomes is they all play ingredients in which case the royal alchemist gets nothing all of these cards get discarded another potential outcome is that two players could play ingredients and one could play spells so since over half of the spells are ingredient cards the royal alchemist will get those ingredient cards into their hand and the player who played the spell will resolve that spell the final possible outcome is that two players played spells, one played ingredients. So less than half played ingredients. The Royal Alchemist will get that ingredient card. However, the players who played spells will have to give up two cards of their choice each to the Royal Alchemist for this round. Finally, players will be able to, from their hand, play up to three ingredient cards into their cauldron. This is your tableau that you are building up in order to try to win the game. The Royal Emblem card will pass to the next player and continue until someone wins. In addition, one other card that could be played at any time is the stop card. That will negate the effects of one spell. And the sabotage card does not count as an ingredient but does not have any spell effects the game will continue until somebody reaches one of the three conclusions either a this deck runs out all the cards except for the sabotage cards in players hand are played because when players play sabotages they go back to their hand and whoever has the most cards in their cauldron is the winner 
Another way the game can end is if seven cards are the exact same type in their cauldron. If you can hit seven of a kind, you win. And the final way is if you have ten cards in your cauldron and at least six of them are different, then you will win. It's a pretty simple game, pretty straightforward. A lot of unique spells and different types of ingredients, as well as the ability to stop spells and choose to play nothing by playing your sabotage card. But you have to be careful because if you play a sabotage card and you have no cards in hand and you owe the alchemist, or alchemist currently now, two cards, you'll have to take it from your cauldron. If you take cards from your cauldron, You'll give them to the alchemist, uh, the royal emblem holder of the time, and then any extra cards in your cauldron are going to get discarded, which can be very painful in the late game. That's the basic idea for the game. Let's come up and talk about it. So let's talk about the game Brew and Fool and discuss this party game, I would say, where players are going to be trying to place cards from their hand into their cauldron, and before that, placing cards face down and hoping to either not lose too many cards or successfully cast a spell or sabotage the player who holds the royal emblem. It's kind of tricky because you, during the play phase, you can either give nobody anything and you all get kind of screwed over, or you can succeed by casting a spell or sabotaging and lose nothing and potentially gain something when you play a spell. Yeah. Or you can go ahead and all play spells. Everybody still gets to cast those spells, but we all have to give two cards from our hand to the player who holds the emblem. It's brutal because they get a lot of cards all at once, and that can really help them win the game. <laughs> Not only that, too, but because... If you do try and go for broke and you have a lot of cards in your cauldron and you only have one card or no cards in hand, you'll have to give as many cards as you can, other than sabotage cards, to the player who is the holder of the royal emblem. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have to give the difference in cards from your cauldron. And from there, you'll lose the rest of your cauldron. So it doesn't matter how many cards you have in your cauldron, you'll lose it. So be careful when you choose to cast what spells and how many spells or ingredients, I should say, that you want to put into your cauldron. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, hand management, which actually was a little bit um, subtler and more tricky than you might think at first glance in this game. But really, you want to keep your hand full of some cards and different types of cards that you can actually utilize and so that you have a choice when you're playing uh, those cards down. When you're playing this game, the first thing you would think is it's a very simplistic mm -hmm. style party game, but you'll sl slowly grow to understand that there is A, hand management, B, tableau management, and how you place what ingredients into the cauldron, mm -hmm. as well as there's going to be certain special wild ingredients too that you can play that count as pretty much any type of ingredient. It's a nice little, little trick mm -hmm. there as well. But it has to copy an ingredient you already have, so it may or may not be helpful for you, depending then, on which yep. objective you're going after. And then there's also a social aspect, too. Mm -hmm. The social aspect is, what did everyone else play to give to the person who holds the royal emblem? Because if everyone plays a spell, everyone's going to be screwed over. Yeah, you can pay, mm -hmm. play your spell, but they can end up getting anywhere from like four, 6 to 12 cards. And that can yeah. be very, very powerful for the person who holds that. I mean, even just giving them a lot of ingredient cards is... Uh, can feel like, oh, we gave them so much stuff. <laughs> Especially and when most of the time you can only draw one card. <laughs> most of the time you can only draw one card per mm -hmm. round. So if you're giving away two cards in a round and you only draw one. Which is why this uh, draw three was so powerful in the game too. A very powerful card. Some of the spells too are, I think, um, you, and that's another element to the strategy is which spells you play and when. Some of them will let you discard ingredients from other people's cauldrons mm -hmm. or steal them. And then, of mm -hmm. course, drawing three. At least when you play the pot of the goldies, the little goldie <laughs> yeah, retrievers, you. you're going to be able to draw three. So when you give two and draw three, it won't feel so bad. At least you'll mm -hmm. be getting one extra card from mm -hmm. the round. So playing that spell is almost like always worth it. <laughs> but it's that tricky part where you can ju you're can you choosing between playing your last ingredient in hand and basically losing it, guaranteed or playing that sabotage and hope everyone else plays an ingredient. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, do you want to do this? And if so, what do you think everyone else is going to do? Three little elements in a game that I did not think would have these type of elements in it. So I do really enjoy those aspects of the game. It still has a little bit of take that style to it. If you don't like take that style party games, it does have that. There's yeah, stealing and there's hurting. You will be hurting. like losing stuff from your cauldron to other people or from your hand even as well. Playing spells like your pot of goldies and then Callie popping out with a uh, traffic mites and saying, mm -hmm. stop. Nope. You can lose that card. <laughs> and that's the one unique card in the game that you can play from your hand. 
on somebody else's spell action. So mm -hmm. it's pretty useful as well. And of course, when you have the Royal Emblem, you're just hoping players screw up. That's pretty much what you're doing on your turn. You're hoping that everybody just gives you things. And you do get to play spells or ingredients into your cauldron as the Royal Emblem holder. You mm -hmm. just don't get to take mm -hmm. part in the other phases of the game. When the you artwork, too. You'll have gained oh. a lot of cards. <laughs> yep, that's true. You, hopefully you'll gain a lot of cards. <laughs> what about the artwork? The artwork? Yeah, it's really a uh, cute cartoony kind of style. Um, I love the, the design of the cards. Made it for me, really easy to understand which card was the spell, which was the ingredient, and of course the instant card looks very different as well. The big red background, I think, is uh, very easy to understand the rules just by looking at the card. The borders are very yeah. uh, easy to observe. Red yep. borders are going mm -hmm. to be spells, and the greenish borders, I guess they're green, are going to be the yep. ingredients. And like you said, they're the ones that are more relevant, like sabotage, those are going to be very outspoken and loud and in your face. Mm -hmm. And the art reminds me of Adventure Time, so if you like that kind of style, you know, it's it, it's kind of like Kitty Childish style artwork, but at the same time, it's kind of like modern in a way, I suppose. Yeah, and it, it kind of has a little bit of fun with the fantasy theme and the different sort of uh, puns in the cards and all of that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd use any of the ingredients they have available no. for my own personal cauldron, no. but they're definitely <laughs> cute. The whole game is very cute. It has that really cool, interesting party aspect to it. And then, of course, a lot of little thinking mechanics that I really did enjoy. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and it's too. a small game, so uh, once we're able to travel again, it'll be easy to take it with you wherever you go and have a, a short, short game before dinner or wherever. <laughs> this is going to be a game that fits well in the party atmosphere. It's going mm -hmm. to be a game good for kids, and it's a good, good gateway game to get people interested in playing other unique games that have things like tableau management and the simultaneous action flipping, as well as the social aspect to in hand management. There's a lot of little pieces in this game uh, that normally aren't in party games. Most of the time in party games you have like four cards and you just play a card on somebody and then they lose yeah, two cards it feel like yeah with no. the turn by turn so maybe people who are used to that kind of game can introduce them to this one some different gaming elements in here that they may not have played before i know that there's going to be some exclusive cards some kickstarter exclusive kind of stuff mm -hmm. and that'll be cool to see it'll be cool to see what else they have with this game as far as it stands it'll work this game already feels pretty much done as far mm -hmm. as a card game goes looking forward to see what happens and i think for the people that fit this audience of game they're really going to enjoy it for me personally it's a game I'll probably play with family and friends that are newer to gaming, or if I go by, by myself in an yeah. atmosphere <laughs> like that, yes, this boy, I'd probably be playing the game. Brew and Fool. Overall, it's a good game. I had fun with it. Ugh. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Brew and Fool, go ahead and take a look down below. Link in the description where you can pick the game up on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell button. notification. Do it! Hit the bell! <laughs> it's really important. Tell them! Hit the bell! Hit the bell! As well as go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Got a lot of cool stuff going on there. Yep, I'm doing a giveaway for Callie's Corner, my video series all about introducing more people to board games. Family fun pack of four mm -hmm. games you can win on the website. And of course, talking about other games, our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one down below, and you can join us if you'd like. Yep, we'd love to see you there. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to... Brewing with you next time building potions with you next time that's right